Hey folks, David Stewart here. So, book cover art. Occasionally I get this like comment like, why don't you have more, you know, painted art on your book covers? Why do you have, you know, like photo book covers? Now this isn't exactly a photographic book cover, rather it's like a photo composite book cover, let's say. Um, and the short answer, I'm gonna give you all the answers, but the shortest answer is this is a lot cheaper. So um, this is a 99 cent short read. It's called The Wasting Desert. It's out right now. You can actually get the paperback for $4.99. It's like a 20,000 word little novella. It takes It's a fantasy horror book um, or horror fantasy, whichever order you wanna put them in. So for a 99 cent short read, why don't I have a bunch of painted art? And the answer is because I don't want to spend a huge amount of money on a 99 cent short read. That's not a good idea. Whereas I can design this book cover for basically free. You know, I have a uh, stock photo subscription service. So it's really just the cost of that and, you know, software, which I already have to design this book cover. So this I can just design myself and it's certainly good enough to sell and to do the work that it needs to do in the genre that it's in. Um, whereas this would cost um, hundreds of dollars just to maybe license the image or thousands of dollars to commission a new one of the similar quality. So this covers by a Turkish artist named Karim Bayat, an excellent artist. He's done Twilight Force book covers or um, album covers. He's done uh, he's done tons of fantasy art, a lot of book covers that are out there. So he's a great artist working in uh, in kind of in the digital space. And his art's very high contrast, really pops. It's a he's a great artist. He's not cheap, right? So if you want that high quality art, you're gonna have to pay a lot for it. Now it's okay, in my opinion, to spend $1,500 or $2,000 on cover art. If you think it is going to help you sell a lot more books and you are at the level of sales where you can spend $2,000 on a book cover and it is a proper investment. So let's, talk about that for a minute. For most people who are maybe be beginning their journey as an author, uh, spending a lot of money on uh, high quality art is just not a very good economic investment. You don't have enough traction out in the world. You don't have enough followers. You haven't attracted enough readers for that really high quality book cover to do much work. Your book, because let's say you just decide to put a book out on Amazon, you don't do anything else. That book cover is probably not going to create a lot of sales because Amazon is not going to show your book to virtually anyone because you haven't sold a lot of books already and you haven't uh, advertised or something like that. So you got to do a lot of things before people can even see the book cover to click on it to buy it. And um, I guess that gets to my next point, which is a book cover is an ad. That's its primary purpose is to get somebody to look at the book and be like, I think there's things in that book that I want to read and to buy it and read it. That's why you want people to uh, look at the book cover and buy it. So it's an ad for your book. And to that end, the ad needs to appropriately represent what's in the book. And depending on what genre you're writing in, painted artwork is actually a no-go. So if you're in the high fantasy space, which this is a high fantasy novel, or this is a sword and sorcery novel, if you're in the fantasy space, a painted book cover is completely okay and is completely appropriate. But you can also do a photo book cover and sell books, okay? Um, if you are outside of that space, most of the time an illustrated book cover will actually harm your ability to sell the book. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Basically, uh, when you're working within genre fiction, readers have a set of expectations. Consumers have a set of expectations. And if they see a book that doesn't jive with what they've already experienced, they might think that, that that they're seeing it erroneously. Like if they're browsing horror books on Amazon and they see your illustrated book cover, they might scroll past it thinking Amazon has just thrown a book that doesn't belong there in. And in fact, uh, consumers more and more, I think on Amazon are seeing books that they don't wanna see because of problems with Amazon's algorithm and advertising and people manually putting their books into the incorrect categories in order to try to get a bestseller, a bestseller badge even though you know, it's in the wrong category in the wrong book. You're trying to get a bestseller badge selling like four or eight copies of a book uh, because no one buys anything out of that category. But that screws up all the categories for everyone else. Um, 
Anyway, that's a total side thing. The thing is consumers want to see book covers that are interesting, but signal to them the genre that they're actually looking for, the things that they're actually looking for in a story. So if you're writing a horror novel, and this is fantasy horror, so really I could have an illustrated book cover or I could have a photographic book cover or something. And this definitely says fantasy. This is definitely a fantasy cover design for a lot of reasons like the planet, you know, the weird desert, the high contrast, the flaming skull. This is all stuff that would say fantasy to you, but also say horror because of the colors and the fact that there's a a skull on it, right? You know, so there's elements that will tell you that it's horror as well. Um, if somebody were just browsing straight horror and they saw, you know, an illustrated book cover, they'd think it belongs in fantasy and they wouldn't click on it because it doesn't signal to them the things that they're looking for in the genre. And this is going to be true in lots of other kinds of genres as well. If the art doesn't really match the genre expectations, it'll actually work against the sales. The other thing about art, I mentioned that it costs a lot of money to commission good art, is that it costs a lot of money to commission good art. And so um, if you spend that money, it's going to take a long time to get a return on that investment. Moreover, if you don't spend that money, chances are you're going to have a bad, you're going to possibly have a very bad cover um, and you're going to have a really bad illustration on your cover that's going to harm your sales and make your book look like it's just some kind of weird amateur thing, uh, you know, some some random, you know, I'm trying to remember what the name of that. There was this book that that is like notorious for that, that had this weird uh a hand-drawn book cover by the author that didn't realize how bad his book cover looked. Uh, it's like really famous. I'm trying to remember what it was. But anyway, I slipped my mind. Leave me down in the comments what it was. It was about some, you know, 14-year-old Mary Sue kind of character saving the world or something like that. Um, and the author would respond to reviews on Amazon like relentlessly. Like he spent all day like trying to defend his book from the one-star reviews, which is just uh, kind of hilarious in its own right. Like threads that are just like threads on Amazon reviews. How weird is that? Anyway, a lot of times people will either make or buy a an inappropriate book cover, uh, illustrated book cover, because they want a classic like pulp illustrated cover, but they don't know an artist who's capable of producing that quality of art, or they find the artist and they realize that that artist charges a lot of money. If you want Michael Whalen to illustrate your book cover, you're going to have to pay him a pretty penny based on his his history. It's going to be a great piece, but it's going to cost a lot of money. So to find an artist of that high a caliber, he's going to charge a lot of money because it's going to take him a lot of time and effort to make the book cover, and he spent years developing his skills to be able to do that. So what tends to happen is people buy cheaper illustrated book covers, and then they look really bad. So one of the worst decisions you can actually make when it comes to illustrated book covers um, outside of very specific genres is to get illustrated book covers that are essentially comic art. Um, you might find a really great comic artist who does like beautiful comic book covers and then you hire him to do a paperback cover. If, if you don't already have an established reader base that is going to like that, that you know is going to dig you know, something that's a little bit weird uh, for that, you can actually harm your sales because it's going to look like a comic book and someone's going to think that it belongs in a different genre or that it's in the wrong placement. They're going to get confused. Consumers are going to get turned off by the cover. So if you're doing a fantasy book, which you can do an illustrated cover, it's got to be like a high quality painting, either a high quality digital painting or like an oil painting that is going to look good. And that's going to cost you a lot of money. And if you're not spending that kind of money on the cover, it's going to end up being a bad looking cover. Whereas if you were to do a photographic cover, you could make a photo cover cheaper that looks better than most painted art that you're going to get certainly in the same price range. So if you were to spend two or $300 on a book cover design, and one of the great things about me knowing how to just do my own book covers is uh, I can just put out a book and be like, oh, I think I'd like to make $50 this month on this book. You know, I don't expect a ton of people to buy this book and that's okay if they don't because I already wrote it and uh, also I didn't have to invest a lot of money in a cover so I can easily be in the black selling 50 copies of the book and feel okay. I made, you know, it'd be 50 divided by three. So, you know, 
what? You know, I made fifteen dollars. Ooh, cool. You know, uh, made fifteen dollars on a book. I feel good. You know, so I don't have to sell like a million copies in order to recoup my investment. But if you spend two or three hundred dollars on a very well designed photo book cover, then it's a lot easier to recover your investment versus spending a thousand dollars on good art. And if you spend three hundred dollars on bad art it's gonna be worse than the $300 book cover by a lot. And there's certain genres that you really are expected to do some sort of like photographic, you know, kind of like photographic book cover. Um, you can do them for, for fantasy, so photographic covers are an option for fantasy. And if you're doing something like, I don't know, paranormal romance, it's really expected that you're gonna have a photo book cover. And if you're doing an illustrated book cover, it might, People might think it's like a children's book. It just depends on what the illustration looks like. I don't have like a million examples to show you, but uh, if it's just a really bright, super colorful, simple kind of illustration that looks like it's from a children's book, that means people are going to think it's a children's book, not an adult fantasy book, which really needs to be a high quality painted cover. So uh, those are that's my opinion on that. Why don't I have more illustrated book covers? Because photo covers are cheap. I do photo covers because they're cheap, and I like to to have them cheap because it makes it easier for me to make money selling books. And I don't necessarily, I'm not going to necessarily sell more books with an illustrated book cover. And if I did sell more books with an illustrated book cover, I'd have to sell so many more books to cover the cost of the illustrated book cover that it's probably not going to be worth it. So, you know, a free cover versus a thousand dollars worth of art, it's pretty easy to make the economic decision. I'm going to make my own book cover and that way I'm just always making money on my books forever and not worrying about like, how am I going to make my money back that I spent on the book cover to try to, to try to get this thing to sell? I have no problem uh, hiring a great artist to do a good book cover for a longer book where I am exp playing the long game on it and I expect to sell a lot of copies and I can recoup my investment. Uh, I have no problem with that, but you know, for a 99 cent short read, hey, it's really easy to just throw that book cover up or like have a really generic, you know, just a generic cover that uh, will fit in the genre and do the work that it needs to do. So that's all my information on that. I know that's maybe a long video to say illustrated versus photo covers. Why do I do so many photo covers? The answer is because they're cheap and I like cheap things because that makes it easier to make money. So I'm not like flushing money down the toilet and photo covers will often do better than illustrated covers within the same price range. In fact, they almost universally will until you get to very high quality painted book covers. So that's my opinion on that. You can leave me your thoughts down below, obviously. Um, you know, Keep in mind, a lot of this comes from market research and experience. Uh, lots of individuals may like a comic cover for their fantasy novel. They may, it may totally represent what their story's about, and then they may get puzzled that people are confused by the cover or consumers don't want to click on it because it doesn't fit their preconceived ex expectations. Uh, the reality is you have to work a little bit with the expectations of the market if you want to actually be, you know, be in business. So thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great one. Oh, this book is out now. It's called The Wasting Desert. I think it's $4.99 for the paperback. It's a short paperback. It's only like 20,000 words, uh, but it's 99 cents for the ebook, so you can grab it and read it. It's about a two-hour read, so uh, kind of like Voices of the Void. It's about a similar length, so I thought I'd do one that is another horror story. This one is... Um, fantasy horror. Technically, I released it in the Krampus Christmas book last year, but I thought I'd do a one-off for October here in 2021 just for fun um, because it's a great month to sell horror. So thanks so much, guys. The Wasting Desert, and I will see you guys next time.